This video builds upon everything I said in the previous video and articulates with great detail and specificity the same exact sentiment expressed by Dave Daly and David Nino Rodriguez in the Alpha Corner 2 episode titled, When the Right Energy Enters the Room, the Wrong Energy Gets Nervous. And this will help people understand how this all breaks down along party lines. The original videos are linked in the description for greater quality of audio and video. And for time constraints, I'll have to draw the parallels later, but you're free to watch them and you'll see the glaring parallels yourself. I just had my first mask incident. So at first, I went to Sportsman's Warehouse in Provo to get me a couple of BB guns. But they didn't have any CO2 cartridges, so I just got the BB guns and the BBs. No problem. Oh, by the way, first let me start off at Walmart. For a week prior to, they were announcing, we're going to be requiring masks next week. We're going to be required to have someone standing outside paying someone to say this to all the customers. And I'm going to get around to what this is. This is a passive-aggressive takeover of the collective, revenge of the, be the beta males, and the women who have taken the state as the man of the household. When you receive welfare, if the state finds you having a man in your house, you no longer get welfare from the state, and the state has taken the place of the man. They wanted to break up the family for a reason, and have done a very good job at doing that. Because the family unit is the building block of society, and if you can break up each one of those family units of, say, ten people into ten individuals, that are no longer one unit that will stick up for each other and operate together. Society is putty in your hands and malleable and you can make it take whatever shape, twist it into a pretzel, and ain't none of them individuals can do anything about it. But if they're all in family units, that ain't happening. And the state has effectively replaced the man of the household. I'm going to get around to that. Because this is the passive-aggressive takeover, like a, a bloodless coup. Instead of hostile aggressive, we know how women do it. They'll sit there and smile at you, and inside, you know what passive aggressive is. I don't need to explain that. Yesterday, so Walmart's been saying for a week up until the point where they say, now they're mandatory, and that's the joke. Why would you say a week from now they're mandatory? If it's a virus, what, is the virus going to kick in hard a week from now? If it's really an emergency, why wouldn't you just say, today they're mandatory? Because it's all about behavior modification, and everyone knows that at this point. Everyone, even the ones that are still pretending to believe in the virus, everyone knows that at this point. That it's actually a takeover of the deep state, the embedded bureaucracies that Obama specialized in, right? The deep state holdovers that aren't elected, they're appointed to these positions, and they've infiltrated so many different positions on all these bureaus. But that's why everything's about to go back to a reality. Reality's about to set in because meritocracy funneled through bureaucracy creates credentialism. Those credentials aren't going to be worth shit. And it's going to be back down, boiled down to a matter of what you can do, what you merit. Not what bureau gave you a credential to say whether or not you can cut hair, but whether or not you can actually cut hair. Or any other thing that you need a license or a permit. So... For a week before they mandated the mask at Walmart here in Springville, they had someone out front saying, next week, we're starting Monday, next week, we're going to be mandating the masks. I haven't worn a mask in there yet. And when I go in, every one of the Walmart employees sees me, and they don't walk up, oh, sir, sir, excuse me, sir, you, you, you need a mask. They don't. Yesterday, when I walked, but they do have a, a girl standing out front handing out masks. And like I said, she asked me one day, do you have a mask? I said, no, I need one. Grabbed it and put it in my pocket and walked in. And the key to all of this, I'll get around to that. I don't want to jump around too much. It's not letting the spiritual parasites infect you. It's keeping a smile in your heart, not just a fake ass, shallow smile on your face. That's passive aggressive. But so yesterday, I see a group of people walk up to this lady that's underneath this little shade awning, and she's got the, the masks up here. And some of them say something, they ask her a question about the mask, so like, are they mandatory? She's like, yeah, yeah. And then someone else in their group, there's like four or five of them, some other lady says, I thought they weren't enforcing it. As I walk right by, right, I demonstrated for them. 
that they're not enforcing it. You're sitting there asking permission. You're submitting to their authority to require this when all you got to do is walk right by. And that's what this is all about, to get your compliance. Because like in China, they want a Chinese-style ability to implement tyrannical dictatorship. And that's what you're going to get. And y'all are going to get what you deserve. Because for the last 20 years, been sitting around calling those tinfoil hatters tinfoil hatters. Because it was much more easy, convenient, and comfortable to point at them and make fun of them. Rather than acknowledge the truth that they're bringing you. You take a survey, you realize that 75% of the population doesn't agree with them, and you join them. It's just easier. It's as cowardice as can be. It's like that. I think it was Snoop Dogg or Dr. Dre had this guy on the seat. He said, man, man, I was in like five gangs. Whichever one's winning, that's my side. And that's the side you took for the longest time. Whichever one's winning. And for the longest time, you wanted to go with the majority of uh, opinion conventional wisdom, consensus reality, and take a survey and the most of the majority is what formed your opinion. So, yesterday that happened when I walked into Walmart. There's people sitting there asking permission and saying, I thought they weren't enforcing it. As I walk right in and show that they're not. And every time I go in, all of the Walmart employees see me and none of them come up and say anything. Today there was an incident. So I go and I get my BB guns at uh, Sportsman's Warehouse, but they didn't have CO2. So I went over to Spanish Fork to uh, Big Five to get CO2. And as I walk in, a lady says, uh, they got the sign. Everywhere's got the sign on the front that says masks are required, but none of them are actually enforcing it. They just require it. It's just mandatory. It's just company policy. But if you want to use force, uh, I mean, so I walk in, and the lady, oh, excuse me, sir, do you have a face covering? I said, no, I don't. I'm exempt. Thank you. And walk right by. And I'm looking for the CO2, looking for the CO2. And I come back around to this side of the store. One of them said with a little bit more contempt in their voice, what are you looking for? CO2. Excuse me, do you have a mask? Do you have a face covering? And she's still trying to passive aggressively pretend to be polite. I said, no, I don't. I'm exempt. On what grounds? Because I've just declared myself as such, and any further details are none of your business. And at that point, she starts to get pretty hostile. Blah, 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 blah. And I didn't even hear what she said. I said, if you're going to kick me out, kick me out. Oh, no, we're, I'm just saying, we'll do your shopping for you. If you'll go wait at the front of the store, we'll, wait, we'll do your shopping for you. The CO2 are right there. That's all I'm here for. But if you'll just wait at the front of the store, we'll do your shopping for you. With a fake ass smile on her face, being passive aggressive, and she's seething with contempt and hatred in her heart. But all they're doing is asking you to demonstrate how do you stand up to this kind of peer pressure, and they want you to demonstrate it. And that's why they're going to give you a little resistance and say, but no, sir, I need you to go stand up front, and I'll get your things for you. They're right there. Grab them. Let's go. And at that point... There's that, that chick that's being a Karen, and there are male Karens out there, too. They're called beta males. And I'm going to explain how underneath, subconsciously, and plenty of them know it consciously, this is a takeover of the beta males and the Karens and the women through this faux feminist movement and the state to overpower the individual. And the sovereignty of the individual is going to be overrun by the collective. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And these beta males that can't fend for themselves and these women that have uh, decided if men are worth trying uh, 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 to establish a family with, I'll take the state as my family, are recognizing this is their time to rise. This is a takeover of the collective taking over the individual. Of the weaker ones that need, their strength comes from the power of numbers, beta males and women, the only way they're going to overpower a strong individual is through numbers. And they recognize that's what's happening right now. The bureaucracy of unelected officials has forced this on the people. But they're not forcing it. They need compliance. And that's why, in a way, sorry, I'll finish the story about Big Five. She says, you know, you got your face covered. No, I'm exempt. Uh, oh, yeah, under what grounds? On what grounds? Because I've just declared myself as such, and any further details are none of your business. Well, 
Although there's something about Lula, I think she must have said, we'll do your shopping for you. But I don't even think she openly admitted that's what she was saying. She still wanted to go back and forth and do some mental jujitsu. And I said, if you're going to kick me out, do it. Don't, oh, I said, don't get hostile and aggressive with me. I'm not your enemy. Oh, I'm not getting hostile or aggressive, sir. I'm just saying that if, if, and, blah, 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 and we'll do your shopping for you, if you'll just go wait at the front of the store. I think at first she said in front of the store, like outside, in front of the store. But then she, uh, if you'll just go wait at the front of the store, we'll do your shopping for you. Because at first I was like, are you kicking me out? If you're going to kick me out, just do so. Oh, no, I'm just saying if you'll go wait at the front of the store, we'll do your shopping for you. There's the CO2. That's all I came for. Okay, well, if you'll just go wait at the front of the store, we'll do your shopping for you. There's the CO2 that I want. Grab them. Let's go. And at that point, this other guy steps in and grabs some of them and says, you want the crossman? And she stomps off all pissed off because he undermined her authority. And that's what she was doing was exercising her authority because she bowed down and submitted to this new power takeover that's a passive aggressive, not a hostile takeover, a passive aggressive takeover. And by putting on the mask, that gives her the authority to demand that we did it, so you have to do it too. And she's sitting there on a power trip, exercising her new authority because she took the mark, and now she's going to demand you do too, or I get to control you and manipulate you and, and determine what you're going to do. And I override your authority because I wore the mask, so I get to tell you what to do now. So at that point, when she keeps saying, oh, well, if you just go away to the front of the store, we'll do your shopping for you. I, I decided what I'm going to say next time. I'm going to say, no, you won't. That means you'll touch my products and you're contaminated. Use that same disease that they know isn't real as your justification for saying, no, I'm not going to let you do my shopping for me. That means you'll touch every one of the products and uh, you're just as likely to be contaminated and make them feel like they're diseased. So at that point, a dude steps in and asks, because he's standing right there and watching this back and forth between me and her the whole time. And he steps in and he says, okay, you want the Crossmans or the this or the that? And she stomps off all pissed off that he undermined her authority. And I said, no, I want the big box. And so he goes over a couple of these. Yeah, I want those. And I grab them and we're walking up to the cash register. And I say, you ruined her fun, man. She, you, ruined, you took all the fun out of it. She was really getting into that. By the time we get up to the cash register, there's a, a checkout lady that was still there at the cash register the whole time, and him. And about that time, the Karen walks over, and I was simply enforcing, and she, she reaches down to grab something down here and act like she's moving a receipt or something down here below the registers, but she just came over to say, I was simply enforcing company policy or upholding. I said, yeah, you were getting a little personal satisfaction out of it, too. Let's not kid ourselves. By that point... I had paid for it. She, gave, she gives me my receipt, and I walk out the door. But that's what had happened there, and I look like a trophy whose head they want to mount on the wall long before this whole thing went down with all this BS that's going down. I've noticed this, that gatekeepers want to deny me service and access wherever I go. See, I may get that white male privilege in some circumstances, but I get the exact opposite in plenty of other circumstances. So it balances out. Because I'm six foot two, blonde hair, blue eyed, got this military looking cut, and I am the icon of power and authority in that white male patriarchy that they've been programmed and brainwashed into thinking if we just take this system down, we can prop up our new system and make it a better world. We just need to burn this one down first. I am the iconic representation of that, and these brainwashed bastards been being brainwashed for a long time. So I've noticed anywhere I go, there's a beta male or a woman behind the counter, or anywhere else where they can deny me service or access, and they happen to be the gatekeeper right there behind the checker, behind the counter. They use their position right there as gatekeeper to deny me service or access as a form of authority, where they can exercise their authority and get on a power trip. I've noticed this for a long time because the guy sees me as the guy who took his girlfriend in high school and the girl sees me as the guy in high school that would never date her or cheated on her with her best friend. So they both take this opportunity. I look like the principal or the policeman or your boss at work because I don't have blue hair and look like a libtard. They see me as the iconic figure of authority that they can stick it to the man. I'm going to take this 
nice little opportunity to stick to the man. Like when I go in a place and ask, can I use your phone? And they, no, I'm sorry, we, we don't know, it's kind of policy. But if I look like I was half retarded and had a disability and I was gay, sure, we'll let you use the phone. So. The weaker people want this takeover because they think it will empower them. Because in a real world of survival of the fittest, those with the greatest amount of merit, they can't compete. They're incompetent. In a world where it boils down to your merit, what you can actually do. So, they want a balancing of the power or even an overthrow of the power to make bureaucracies that issue permits or licenses, so meritocracy, which is a society where people are promoted based on the merit, what you can, can do, what you can contribute, the areas in which you excel, you will be rewarded for. But we live in a society where that meritocracy is funneled through bureaucracy to create credentialism. Where it doesn't matter if you're a great dentist, unless you have a credential from some bureau that says that you perform these uh, 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 services and that you have these abilities according to this bureau, whether it's an institution of higher education or a large corporation that you've worked for for a long time that says that you're actually a good accountant or a lawyer or whatever. They take away your medical license, they disbar you if you're a lawyer, and everywhere else down the pyramid has their own structural institution of permits and licenses that are issued by this bureau or that bureau, and it doesn't matter how much you merit with your own abilities, unless you have the permit from somewhere that says you can do this, you ain't getting a job doing it. And in this way, the bureaus can actually promote the retards with disabilities And keep the man down and stick it to the man and promote those with lesser abilities and demote those with greater abilities to level the playing field. And all the little libtards that are weak and incompetent like that idea and they can see that this is a power grab by that institution who gives them the permit and the license. What was the latest I saw? NFL? <laughs> this is a kind of a side note. NFL cheerleader, the first male cheerleader on the NFL. This is an institutionalized cultural takeover to implement that same, to expand the power of that institution that has control over the permits and the credentials and decides who gets to actually do what. Not based on your merit, based on the bureau that decided to authorize you to be able to perform this service. Because no matter how good you are at it, unless the bureau gives you your credential, meritocracy funneled through bureaucracy creates credentialism. That's why when you go into a doctor's office, you see those little papers on the wall? They all do it. It's a hypnotic magic trick, just like the white smock and the stethoscope. You don't ask him, so doc, how many, how many surgeries have you performed? And what's your success rate? Let me see your resume. Uh, show, me, show me proof that you can do anything good. You see those little pieces of paper on the wall? Those are the credentials that he got from this bureau that shows that he merits the ability. So you should just lay down and let him cut you open and work on you. Because he's got the credentials from the bureaus. And those bureaus don't just regulate lawyers and doctors. They regulate right down to every one of the smallest things. You need a license to drive, to fish, to do anything you want. And the state, the collective has got these weaklings that are incompetent thinking their day has come. They can rise up in numbers and overthrow the empowered individuals who can actually merit based on their own abilities to perform a certain task. And we can sideline them. And I get the job through this form of affirmative action because I have a disability and an incompetency. So that makes me more qualified for the job because I see a, 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 you guys are discriminating. It's called ableism. Yeah, ableism, like racism. You can't discriminate based on someone's abilities. I'm not disabled. I'm differently able. Ding, ding, ding. Ableism. And this institution of the state with all these embedded bureaucrats that aren't elected and they're appointed to all these positions are making their move and taking over all of society. 
And all these little weaklings and the incompetent and the inferior are like, yeah. And they see me, and this woman's like, if I can take him down, if I can make him submit to my authority, because I bowed down and I submitted to the compliancocracy's new level that they're trying to go to, I can make him do it too. And if we can get a guy like him to do it, we got it in the bag. There is no more meritocracy. It's based on what the state says, and we can control the whole world and issue permits to the weaklings and the retards, anyone with blue hair, and, and, and uh, the victimology. There is a victim credit score. The more ways you can show that you're a victim, the more credit you have on your credit card, and we will issue greater currency to you for all the ways in which you're a victim. I'm a woman. I've been oppressed by the patriarchy. I'm black. I've been oppressed by the white male. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm disabled. Uh, ableism is rampant. They're all discriminating based on abilities. I should get a million dollars a year because of how disabled I am. We'll divvy it up. Anyone who's actually got the abilities, you don't get shit. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. We're going to go to an inverted world where the completely disabled and the completely incompetent get the position and the permit and the credentials. According to the Bureau, who has the authority to declare it. So that's what's happening here. And in the hearts and the minds of all the little weaklings and libtards, they know that's what's happening. And they like it, and they want it, and they think it will empower them through this collectivism because they're not a strong enough individual. As for the women, the state has dismantled the family for this reason, for this takeover. So the women do not have a man and a family to rely upon within a community that has a bunch of families. So they think the power, what is going to empower them and protect them and serve them is the state. And they want the state to overthrow every institution of power and run the whole board. Because they think the state's going to give them the power and, and give them the, uh, the welfare and protect them and serve them and provide for them the way a man would. Because they've done a very good job at dividing men and women. Through this faux feminism movement, again, link is in the description of Adam Weishaupt, where he said, in like the 1700s, we will insinuate ourselves into their good because there is no better way of influencing men than by it than through the women. So we'll insinuate ourselves into the good graces of the women and then give them hints of emancipation and appeal to their own ego and flattery and self-image. Uh, vanity, I think it was vanity, and they will be working on our behalf without even knowing it. That is what's happening. And these women, like the Karen that wanted to mount my head on her wall as a trophy of who she overpowered with her newfound authority that she gained by simply bending over and taking it in the butt and putting one on her face, and now she's got the power and the authority to say, Sir... You go wait over there. I'll decide if you get a shop here and what you get. I'll do your shopping for you. I have the authority. And they're so power hungry and they're on such a power trip that the beta males and the bitches who don't have a man who've been indoctrinated with this hatred, this vehement, venomous hatred for men and the patriarchy and if we just burn down this world we can recreate a new world that's equal and fair for all us victims so all you victims unite and we will overpower and overthrow those with the abilities and those with the merit one other thing so those that don't come at you like that and are simply Trying, and they know that they're, they're the new uh, stormtroopers. They're the foot soldiers of this new takeover. All us little weaklings and libtards and incompetent people just you need to unite and say, you submit and you submit and you submit. I got the power and the authority. I submitted, so you have to also. If they're not coming at you like that with a feeling because this chick had so much, she was boiling. When that guy stepped in and just said, okay, here, which one you want, the cross men or these? She... <laughs> 
closed off, and by the time she came back two seconds later, said, I was just, I was just implementing or uh, enforcing the company policy. I said, no, you, you're getting some personal satisfaction out of this, too. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. That was clear. Her blood pressure was way too high. She was way too engaged in this, and it was a power trip that she was on. Had nothing to do with any virus. Had nothing to do with company policy. No other company policy would she get so personally invested in and have her blood pressure go through the roof when he stops it. And I said, you took all the fun out of it for her. She was really getting into that. She was personally invested in this in such a way that there's no way it was just a matter of upholding company policy or protecting people from a virus. She knows this is our day. This is our time to take over, and I'm going to be empowered. Even if she doesn't consciously know this and isn't able to articulate it the way I am, she subconsciously knows this. She feels this because they've insinuated her, their way into her good graces and told her hints of emancipation. We're going to liberate you. We're going to raise you to the top. You've been the oppressed, and now we're going to allow you to be the oppressor. You just got to help us do this takeover thing. And... Any chance you get, any self-actualized individual who thinks they don't have to comply to this new authority that's being foisted upon society, you take it upon yourself to go enforce it because you're the new authority. You're the new power figure. Yeah, it's no longer the white male. It's the one-legged, uh, one-eyed midget, right? Anyone with a disability and the more victim credits you have to your name the more power and authority you're going to be given under this new institution. You just have to help us completely dislodge the current power structure, and then we'll replace it with something that serves you. Yeah. And they bought into it hook, line, and sinker, and they feel it right in the deep heart, deep part of their soul, and that's why she got so pissed off and her blood pressure rose so much, because this had nothing to do with company policy or a virus. There's the other dynamic that says, well, I have to do it, so so do you. And then there's the uh, third option where they're asking you to demonstrate for them. How do you do this? How do you stand up to this kind of peer pressure and retain your own individual power and declare yourself as your authority? You're not above it all. And if you are, show me how. Show me how it is because I want to do it too. But I just can't bring myself to. So when some people, excuse me, sir, do you have a mask? Do you have a face covering? Half of them are just going to be wanting you to demonstrate for them how do you do it. That way they can go emulate what you're demonstrating for them. And the only way to do this is not let those spiritual parasites dig in and not let her get you pissed off. Because there for a second, my blood pressure started to rise. Because I could see that this bitch has got a fucking hostility and an aggression towards me. How dare you? If we all have to do this, who does this guy think he is? Uh, maintaining his own sovereignty and individual power and authority. He isn't above it all. How come he didn't submit? I have the power. I have the badge. This is my badge that I'm now going to enforce the new authority uh, from the new bureaucracy. And this is my credential. This mask gives me the credentials and the power and authority to tell you to comply with these laws. And I'm the new enforcement officer. And uh, when the other guy kind of undermined her authority by saying, okay... Which ones do you want? These or those? Wham! Right through the roof. She stormed off so pissed off, there's absolutely no way that it was about company policy or a virus. She's highly invested in this. She wants this so bad that she can taste it. And when someone like me denies her that, that indulgence, it killed her. So, you're going to run into that. Half of them are just wanting you to demonstrate for them how do you stand up to the pressure. And so when they ask you, based on what are you, are you exempt? Well, here, here, here at this store, we demand and we require this and that. They're just asking you to demonstrate for them how do you do it. Because they can't do it. And 99% of the rest of the population can't seem to do it either. So to some extent, and the key is, Keep a smile on, on your heart, not just on your face, a fake plastic smile. I know, sir, but I'm just saying if you go wait at the front of the store, we'll do your shopping for you. 
She was so fucking seething with venom and hatred and contempt and animosity in her heart. It was bubbling right out. But she still got a smile on her face because it's called passive aggressive. And girls are really good at doing that. In fact, it's their primary way of being aggressive. Men are hostile, aggressive, overt. They are covertly aggressive and just trying to do a favor for you. So I just need you to go wait over there and then I'll bring these CO2s up there. Grab them. Let's go. But as soon as you go and comply with what I've told you to do, because I'm the authority and I need you to reinforce that and show me that I'm the authority. I need you to make my self-image feel better. So I need you to go comply with my demands first, and then I'll bring these up there. That's what it was all about. And the way to not get sucked into this and be able to demonstrate for them how to do it without letting those spiritual parasites get a hold of you is you have to maintain that smile on your heart, not just a fake one on your face. And most people can't do that. And transference and aggression. We only got three minutes left on this video and I've gone way too long. Harboring the anger and the frustration that you feel from all over the place and then transferring it onto an individual is what we've done for a long time. It's, it's something we do. Harboring, you bottle it up, you store it up, and then you wait for some individual to say, you're the way I feel the way I do. And the response is disproportionate to the supposed offense that was committed upon you. And you unleash a bunch of venom and hatred and anger and frustration on this person because you're in my way. You parked by the fuel island and you blocked me from getting on the scales. And, and I'm going to pretend that you're the reason I feel the way I do inside and you're the reason I'm so fucking miserable because I'm transferring all this anger and frustration that's coming from this systematic, institutionalized, purposely implemented change. I'm going to have to go to the next video, but let me give you another teaser. They are trying to get you to comply with nonsense. Like, you can go to church, but you can't sing. You can sing in the choir, but you can't sing in E minor, only E flat. And there are no sopranos, only baritones and bass. How does it make sense? It doesn't. And that's the idea, is to get you to comply with things that don't make sense to you, but you comply anyway. That's the only way China can get 1.5 billion people in a dictatorship where they have strict regiments of law that don't have to be enforced because the people's mind has been behaviorally modified to the point where even if you don't understand it, you'll comply anyway because, well, that's what they said. They said we have to sing in A minor and A flat and no sopranos. They said that uh, that helps stop the spread. How does that make any sense? I don't know, but they said we have to, so I'm going to because I don't want to have anyone call me out for singing in the wrong note. And they are purposely implementing things to create, ratchet up the frustration and the anger that you're harboring. Everyone's harboring it. And it's just a matter of time till people start to transfer it onto some recipient and pretend that you're the reason I feel the way I do because you uh, cut me off at that light. And it's not because he cut you off at that light. It's everything else going on around you that you can see happening. And that's the reason they're implementing these nonsense regulations is to get you to comply with things that don't make sense to you. And once they can get you to do that, that's a whole other level of compliance. And then the society is malleable putty in their hands.